Um, and to work we go, page uh, 125, um, the, 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 the text I've been reading uh, refer to Paul D's uh, blues man experience has been being rooted uh, in his work experience. Um, and this section uh, really, uh, you know, takes it, uh, takes it very carefully here. Um, and other scholars, again, this guy now is quoting, quoting somebody else quoting, Eckstein is quoting somebody called Alan Rice, who had an article about Paul D's chain gang experience and its importance in establishing an ethical and ultimately liberating notion of call and response. And I think I've got a quote from this guy uh, written into the margins of my book. Um, and that the work songs were, um, were, would allow people to enjoy a repetitive activity that is meant to degrade them. It is a transformation of monotonous labor into liberational joy. That's a quote from Alan Rice um, about this experience. Um, and so through these, this chapter here, um, uh, you have these, these things, how they get woken up on page 126. All 46 men woke to rifle shot. Um, if you've ever been to camp, uh, if you've ever been in the armed forces, or if you've ever been to uh, uh, a, a very strong routine in, in, in like a camp setting, 6 a.m., reveille, whatever, you know, you get up and you get busy. Um, the work crew was like that. You were woken by a rifle shot. Um, and then you were, you were on a chain gang. Um, you, were, uh, you were chained together um, uh, to your brothers. Uh, and, uh, and that is how you had to perform your, uh, perform your work. I'm going to turn to page 128, top paragraph. They chain danced over the fields, through the woods, to a trail that ended in the astonishing beauty of Feldspar. And there Paldi's hands disobeyed the furious rippling of his blood and paid attention. With a sledgehammer in his hands and high man's lead, the men got through. They sang it out and beat it up, garbling the words so they could not be understood, tricking the words so their syllables yielded up other meanings. They sang the women they knew, the children they had been, the animals they had tamed themselves or seen others tame. They sang of bosses and masters and misses, of mules and dogs and the shamelessness of life. They sang lovingly of graveyards and sisters long gone, of pork in the woods, peel in the pan, fish on the line, cane, rain, and rocking chairs. And they beat the women for having known them and no more, no more, the children for having been them but never again. They killed a boss so often and so completely they had to bring him back to life to pulp him one more time. Tasting hot meal cake among pine trees, they beat it away. Singing love songs to Mr. Death, they smashed his head. More than the rest, they killed the flirt whom folks called life for leading them on. Now, you see, see from the beginning of my talk, I said people stereotype the blues as a music of darkness, as the devil's music, but clearly, even though I am going to see music transcend in this text, in this book, we're going to see music transcend, and we're going to see music um, of gospel music become a liberational force and not a submissive force in, in, in Baby Suggs and in other aspects of this text, clearly there is a darkness of the blues that comes out of the experience of being a slave or of being oppressed in any way where your conditions are so bad that you see no other option than to sing a love song to Mr. Death to kill the flirt who fo whom folks called life. And this is, I believe, where the blues made its deal with the devil is in the sense that life was less for certain people, that, that somehow God loved some people less. We talked about this about Haiti a few weeks ago when so many of us were giving of ourselves to Haiti. And we've talked about Africa and uh, after the tsunami several years ago in Asia, whenever a tragedy strikes a people, um, we have to remind ourselves that we're all people. At the end of the day, there are certain common denominators that unite us. Um, so if we're ever in a position where, and most of us, thankfully, have not been in, in this position. We don't know. We haven't been there. We haven't been behind the mule. 
Um, we weren't born into the blues, like, like, like Lightning Hopkins said. So those of us who haven't been there will hopefully, through this music of this prose, be able to say, okay, well, that's why it's that way, because of what they saw and what they experienced um, and, and, and where they've been. I guess I'm out of time. I see the shuffle of coats, the zipping and unzipping of packs. Um, I will see you all on Friday. Uh, thank you very much.